Hey guys, it's Anj. Welcome back to another Tech Talk. Alright, picture this. You're walking on a warehouse with conveyor belts and forklifts. But when you look right next to you, there's a humanoid robot stacking boxes, scanning barcodes, maybe even asking another robot for help. But here's the crazy part. We're not that far away from this. In fact, 2025 might go down as the year humanoids stopping futuristic toys and started their first real jobs. So today, let's break down why humanoids are suddenly trending everywhere, who's building them, what they can actually do, and what it means for all of us. Humanoids are not new. They've always been expensive, fragile, and honestly, not very useful. The biggest unlock this time is Vision Language Action Models, or VLAs. Here's how they work. The first step is where the cameras and depth sensors feed the model a live view of its environment. The second step is where the natural language instructions get parsed. For example, grab me that red cup and put it in the top drawer. The third step is where the model fuses vision and language into a structured plan. It's not just labeling pixels, it's understanding relationships. And the fourth and final step is where the in action policy outputs the motor commands to actually execute the task. Many of these policies are trained with diffusion models, the same tech that generates AI art. But instead of drawing pixels, they generate smooth robot motions. That's why humanoids are starting to move less like stiff machines and more like our everyday humans. But while brains are cool, if the body itself can't keep up, it's practically useless. Old humanoids were hydraulic monsters. They leaked, overheated, and broke joints constantly. That's why Boston Dynamics retired Hydraulic Atlas and replaced it with an all-electric atlas. Quieter, more efficient, and with way less maintenance. The key hardware upgrades this time are the series elastic actuators. These actually put a spring between the motor and the joint, letting the robot feel forces, absorb shocks, and grip delicately. It's how a robot can hand you a paper cup without crushing it. Then there's the balance and control. It uses advanced whole body model predictive control, which keeps a humanoid balanced while it moves arms, legs, and carries loads around, basically orchestrating a body like a symphony. But brains and bodies only matter if they can learn fast. And that's why the OpenX dataset has over 1 million robot trajectories across 22 different robot types. That's arms, wheel bases, bimanual systems, all pulled together. And the idea is the skills trained on one robot transfer to another. You can teach one robot how to load a dishwasher and another robot learns 70% of that skill out of the box. And then you add synthetic data from simulation and suddenly, robots can train on things that would be too expensive or unsafe in real life. And it's not just startups tinkering around anymore. This is becoming a global arms race with Amazon already having over 1 million robots as we speak. But now, they're testing humanoids, like Agility Robotics Digit, to handle jobs wheels can't. Then there's BMW, which is piloting humanoids in Spartanburg right now. They're doing simple tasks like moving bins, but that's how factory playbooks get written. Then there's the Ant Group in China, which just recently launched the Humanoid R1. And this literally cooked shrimp on stage. Slow, but yeah, it did it. And finally, we have the Tesla Optimus. Elon's betting on humanoids as the ultimate factory worker. Optimus can now fold laundry in demos, but Tesla's endgame is tens of thousands of robots working in giga factories. It's no longer just robotics labs, it's trillion dollar companies and national champions all fighting to define the humanoid era. So let's get real, what can they actually do right now? Well they're good at moving and stacking bins, simple pick in place, walking in human environments from stairs to doorways, following fuzzy instructions like, grab something I can drink from. But what they're bad at is dexterity. Like folding laundry, plugging in cables, cooking complex meals. Or long tasks with multi-step plans without a single mistake. Or just clutter messy homes because unpredictability still breaks them. But the real metric here is cost per useful hour. Right now, surprisingly, humanoids are pricey. But the moment they cost less than $25 to $30 an hour to operate, that's when you'll see them flood into warehouses and factories. But let's not get blinded by the hype. There are some massive hurdles ahead of us. For example, reliability. A human can adapt when a box is ripped or misplaced, but robots still have those certain edge cases that can mess them up. Then there's safety. 
You can't put a 70 kilogram humanoid right next to workers without airtight standards. And finally, the energy. Moving like a human takes huge powers, so I can only imagine what the batteries would look like for humanoids. So yeah, they're walking, but they're not marathon runners yet, and we still have a long way to go. Here's the big issue. If humanoids actually roll out at scale, the impact is massive. The first impact is labor markets. They'll take over repetitive, exhausting jobs, lifting, stocking, delivering, but that means reskilling for millions of workers. But there's the healthcare and elder care. With aging populations, humanoids could help people live independently longer and imagine a robot doctor that could accurately make incisions during surgeries. Then there's education and creativity. A lab ro robot that sets up experiments or a creative assistant that moves physical objects as you design. Then there's also homes, down the line maybe dishwashing, laundry, even companionship. But that's the hardest environment because homes are chaotic. And of course there's the flip side. Privacy, inequality, dependence. These robots will have cameras, mics, and logs running 24-7. Who owns that data? Who sets the limits? Who can you trust? Personally, I don't think humanoids replace us. I think they amplify us. Factories become more efficient. Warehouses less exhausting. Hospitals safer. And in our homes, maybe they'll give us back some of the time we spend on our chores. But it's up to us to make sure they're used to enhance human life, not to escape or exploit it. The rollout isn't happening overnight. It'll start with pilots in warehouses, move to factories, then services like restaurants and healthcare, and maybe homes in the 2030s. But let me ask you guys this. If you guys had a humanoid robot in your life, what's the very first task you wanted to do? Drop your answer in the comments, smash that like button if you enjoyed the deep dive, and subscribe for more futuristic tech breakdowns. And once again, thank you guys for listening. I'll see you guys in the next one.